Well, the, the story of this year is two things. The first is um, asset allocation beat narrative once again. 60-40 portfolio is a double-digit winner. Um, and then, like, you know, valuations being stretched. We've had that conversation once a week for nine years. Um, the XLK is up 40 percent year to date. So much for uh, calling the end of the fangs. Apple made a new high uh, 10 minutes ago. Microsoft made an all-time high on Friday. Um, and then you look at, to Shannon's point, here comes the cavalry. Let's take a look at the Russell 2000. Um, it's hanging at the highs. A breakout looks extremely likely, mm -hmm. has been a very, very long time coming, has been a huge underperformer relative to large caps. If this goes, what are you going to say at that point? Because one of the number one reasons for um, being concerned about the markets was uh, the lack of breadth or the concentration among just a handful of sectors. Last week, the XLI, the industrial sector, very quietly made an all-time record high. Almost nobody remarked upon it. Um, but these are important things. So if you're looking at the Russell or you want to talk in ETF terms, the level I'm talking about is 1,600 on the Russell 2000 index or 160 in the IWM ETF. Wait till you hear what happens when that thing breaks that's through. Right. That's why, uh, but wait that's a why you, the hold on, money let me just is add to that for a from, second. I'll get, okay. come back to you and let you finish. That's why Oppenheimer today, I mean, again, we've mentioned sort of the tone of Wall Street's commentary has, has shifted as well. Oppenheimer, you ain't seen nothing yet. Commentary okay? is following point, price. Exactly, but they're pointing out exactly what you're pointing sure. out. Sure. Things and, like and the if, Russell. Okay, so it's fine. But commentary follows price. So I always look at technicals because I just want to understand what people are actually doing. And if, you wonder, if you're wondering where the money is coming from, go take a look at XLU. It's uh, the utilities index. A lot of people looked at that rally this year and said it's too much. Maybe they were right. That is now 5.7% off its highs. The IYR, which is publicly traded real estate stocks, down 5% from its highs. That is coincident with uh, the rates backing up, as Steve Weiss mentioned. The, these things don't happen in isolation from each other. So what you want to see, Scott, to answer your question, you're talking about individual companies getting downgraded. That's a healthy market. You want winners and losers, and you want them to rotate from time to yeah, time. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's exactly for sure. what you should want but to is see it, is it, as an investor. That's, that's great, um, and that's, that's true. Is it time, though, to look at some of the winners and say maybe – a little too much. Maybe no. it's time to have a rotation, as Josh is talking about the healthy nature of the market. Take some off of a Qualcomm, for example, which got downgraded today on valuation, emblematic of the conversation that I was having with, with Weiss, trimming a little SMH because the stocks have done so incredibly well. SMH, first of all, is broken out. It's very technically oriented. NVIDIA broke out above $200 uh, a while back. We discussed that, you and I. I said if it breaks about a, uh, above 200 it's not going to return below there. It has not. So technically— yeah, Some th think it's going to, though, because it got two price target raises today, including one to 240 by UBS. I, I, listen, I think the path for NVIDIA is now higher. I think there's technical confirmation of that. I think— that overall for the marketplace, we continue to uh, move to new highs as we go through the remainder of the year. There is significant strong investment demand for global assets. It's incredible to me the conversation that we continue to have. I heard Steve in his opening remarks say that yields are backing up. And I was waiting for someone to say that that's going to be a bad thing for equities. We were wishing that yields were going to back up just two months ago, and here they are. It's been very supportive financials where you could find opportunity once again. And I will tell you this, at the end of today, I will buy Boeing. Boeing is back. Boeing is giving guidance that is suggesting that the deliveries will resume in December. There's Boeing right there. It's up 3%. You're going to buy it now bucks. or wait for it to pull back? Yes, I will buy it at the end of the day today. If it is trading 362, 364, wherever it is, I like the confidence in the guidance. I think that's a favorable condition for the overall market. So I will buy Boeing at the end of the day. If but Boeing gets into gear, that's a new high for the Dow. That's exactly right. I, I mean, I'm there. You know, so I'm more, more the merrier. It's, uh, for me, I bought Boeing when it got... I owned it, but then when it got destroyed uh, a couple of weeks ago, that's when I added to it. And given all the missteps, they're not going to provide that guidance without having strong confidence. Well, you know, to me, it, the plane was always coming back. The fundamentals were always there. Sure. So but I prefer to buy it when it gets get, I want to get back to NVIDIA real yeah. quick because um, I think this is, this is notable. First of all, I've been in the stock for a long time. I've had my moments where I look like an idiot. The stock sells down from like 300 down to 150. 
what's wrong with you? Now it's back at 200, you know, headed toward 200 and change. Um, I just sit here. Nothing's changed about me. It's an investment. Um, but for traders, they take their cues from names like NVIDIA. And I'm not in that camp. I'm an investor in the company. But traders look at stocks like that getting back on their horse, and they say two things. Number one, um, risk is being rewarded in some of the high-flying names again. We've had a two- or three-week stretch where anything even remotely looking Silicon Valley-ish um, apart from the big five stocks, has been absolutely trashed. Stocks like Zoom and Work and Uber, and we go down the whole list. Um, but seeing a name like NVIDIA get back on the horse, I think is really positive. The other thing is, NVIDIA's story is, whether they like to admit it or not, tied to the macro. Um, investing in the cloud and investing in um, you know, next generation technology at the enterprise and corporate and government level Unfortunately, it's a macro trade. And so I think the movement in the stock tells you not just about what's happening at NVIDIA as a standalone company, but about that bigger story of spending coming back to the enterprise. And that's going to be important for a lot more stocks than just this one. Dr.